Excellent. Good morning. This is exciting time. Our first hybrid lace. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you to the live audience and also to you at home with Zoom. Hey, my name is Lillian Copeland. Our speaker today is a volunteer. Like all of us in Toastmasters are volunteer. Our speaker is a volunteer. The best way you can thank them is to provide honest and useful feedback with the session evaluation at the conclusion of this meeting. Our tech master will drop into chat towards the end of the session for the Zoom attendees at home. All the person attendees, please out the survey that I'll pass at the end. If you miss it, don't worry, we'll follow up with an email at the conclusion of lace. If you're not speaking at home, if you're on Zoom and you're not speaking at home, please remember to keep yourself mute to, uh, to avoid any background noises, such as the barking dogs and the crying children. If you are joining us in person, please do not connect to Zoom at the meeting. We have a fun and interactive session planned today, and thank you. And now I will introduce our speaker. Linda Robinson began her Toastmaster journey in 2009. She walked into the room for the first time, hoping to find people that she could talk to and learn from. Well, we know how that turned out. Linda is currently the Division G Director Elect. She has served as Area Director, belongs to two clubs now, and has belonged to and chartered many clubs in the past. She has chaired LACE and district conferences. She is looking forward to her role as Division G Director and is working with her amazing Area Director team. She believes in servant leadership. This year, her tagline is challenge yourself. And that's what she's here to help you do today. The workshop, are we there yet? As a leader, how do you know you have arrived? This workshop will ask you to think about your leadership destination, but don't be too hasty. The road is longer than you may think. You and those around you will have the opportunity to analyze your, your personal leadership journey and ultimately answer the question, am I there yet? Linda. Hi, everyone. Can folks on Zoom hear me? Yes. I think that's a yes. I Thanks all. Mic, uh, Can't see your faces. There you go. Thanks, Juan. And how about you all here? Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. No matter what that greeting card says, we're not perfect. <laughs> Doesn't matter. We're not. And as leaders, you often will ask yourself, am I there yet? How do you know? I'm going to suggest that our leadership journey our own. <laughs> is in fact a journey, not a destination. Today, I'm going to walk you through some feedback from people that we could respect because of their leadership experience. But you're going to do most of the work. And for those of you on Zoom, we're also going to do work. And we have 12 minus 3. That's a 9. That is not my strong suit. We'll have some breakout sessions on Zoom as well, OK? I think. We're going to give it a try. And we're gonna answer four questions. Before we get to those questions, I'm gonna start with this. I can't move. So I wanna go that way and I don't think I can. No, stay there. So I have to stay here, that's, yeah. that's crazy, but I'll do that. I am not the genius of leadership knowledge. But I am a Toastmaster. Therefore, I'm going to give myself some small amount of credit for knowing a little something about leadership. As my 
lovely room monitor said, Lillian said, I am the division G division director elect. It takes me a while to get all those D words in there. Having to say so many syllables in, in one sentence is hard. <laughs> We've not done that in such a long time. But I stand here today shaking in my sandals because being a division director is a big deal. There's a lot of responsibility. I put this off for a number of years. I put this off for seven years because I, I didn't want to do it. And I looked at people who had been division directors and I worked with Lillian when we were starting a lot of new clubs. And hey, I was like, no, I don't want to do that. Why? I didn't feel like I could create a team, find people who wanted to work on my team and then lead them through a lot, a lot of work. All of that work being for the district? No. All of that work being for our club members. I mean, you heard it from Christine, if you were in the room earlier, about how the quality of a club makes a difference. And the members are the first part of that. I'm also going to suggest that a year from now, if I stand in this same spot, I am going to look back at myself and say, whoa, first of all, you survived. Second of all, you made a whole bunch of friends. And thirdly, no, I'm not gonna run for a district office, but I, I did learn a lot and I have grown, I have changed. And I want you all today online, as well as out in the audience to think about your own personal journey. Your journey, any leadership journey, can be any color of the rainbow. It can be a long and winding road. It can be a roller derby track. But it's not a horse race. And it certainly has technical challenges. When you think about being a leader, <clears throat> I want you to start thinking first about these we have this. questions. We have it. We have this. That you have on your paper. Give us a moment. Show on your screen. I need to put your slides up. Oh, hang on. Yeah, let's Share do screen. that. Yeah. Yeah, can do that. Hang on. Share screen. Share screen. Share your screen now. Oh, I need to share. I'm going to share right now. If I can find my Zoom. Go back. Click one of the. Huh? Click that one. No, presentation. But then I'm going to lose. Show. There you go. Not show, showing that on there. No, they got they got slides. Okay. You know what? Never mind. I'm gonna have one of my handouts. Actually, no, I can look at it here. Okay. Here's what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about. Will you ever learn all that there is to know? I would suggest that even Christine, who has been district director and come off of her most joyous role of all immediate past district director, <laughs> could say, uh, no, there's still stuff out there, like how to use this computer. I'm also gonna suggest this question, will you ever run out of opportunities to lead? Well, if you're in Toastmasters, no, because every year we have lace, every year we have training, and every year there are clubs that need to be mentored and new clubs that need to be sponsored. And 
Finally, once you reach the top, define top, but once you reach the top, is there nowhere else to go? I have several quotes that I'm going to suggest really help us understand four things which you can't see. Those four things are vision, growth, change, and service. You see them in your handout. So remember, vision, growth, service, hand. vision, growth, change, and service. Too bad, I have really good pictures in my presentation too. Well, let's talk about vision. We've heard if you don't have a vision, you aren't gonna get to where you're going because you don't actually know where you're going. In addition to that, if you have a vision and you don't communicate it, no one knows where they should be going with you. So they'll never find you and you'll never meet up at the end in all the right places, right? I found some really interesting quotes on vision from some people I had no idea who they were. Reverend Theodore Hesburgh. Father Hesburgh was president of the University of Notre Dame. And he is widely considered one of the most influential figures in higher education. And he is the recipient of Congressional Gold Medal and Medal of Freedom and held 16 US presidential appointments. I think he knew something. And this is what he says about vision. The very essence of leadership is that you have to have a vision. It's got to be a vision you articulate clearly and forcefully on every occasion. You cannot blow an uncertain trumpet. I think that's very telling, but we're not gonna stop there. We're gonna go on to Warren Bennis. Who's Warren Bennis? Well, he's an American scholar, organizational consultant and author. And of course, if he's a consultant, he knows everything there is to know. That was a joke. And he's widely regarded as a pioneer of the contemporary field of leadership studies. He studied this, I don't have to, all I have to do is read his book. But instead, I'm gonna give you this one line quote. Leadership is the capacity to translate vision into reality. So I say to you, I stand here, gonna walk into divisions that losing clubs, clubs may go away, are they coming back? We don't know. I'm going to stand firm on June 30th, July 1st and say at the end of this year, this club is coming back. This club is going to be strong. These clubs are going to be distinguished. Do we all agree? And we're going to be there next year in June because with a vision and all the tools and all the resources to make it happen and focus on the clubs, we can do it. The other reason I think we can do it, and this is really important, this is an inflection point. Some believe the pandemic is over. Some aren't quite sure, but we know one thing for sure. What's happened in the last two years is over. It'll be different. We've learned how to be flexible and dynamic and figure out how to change at a moment's notice based on the broadcast you find on evening news. We're gonna make this year happen. Now let's talk about growth. The picture I have is lovely because it's a caterpillar with a shadow of a butterfly. I talked about growing, that I'm gonna be different when I stand here next year. How about Jack Welch? We know Jack Welch, he was cons he's considered the greatest business leader during his tenure at General Electric. And in 1999, he was named manager of the century. That may have been slightly overstated, but nonetheless, this is what he says. 
one of the things he says, he says a lot of things. Before you are a leader, success is all about growing yourself. When you become a leader, success is all about growing others. I mean, was he a Toastmaster or what? Maybe he was, I doubt it. But nonetheless, do you think that's important? Embed that right here in your heart and say, I'm gonna grow myself and then I'm gonna grow others. Because if you don't know who you are and where you've been and where you're going, you can't do that for anyone else. Peter Drucker, we've heard of Peter Drucker. He's Austrian American, management consultant, again, a person who knows everything, educator and author, and a leader in the development of management education. So he studied this and yes, we too can read his books. But what he said is leadership is lifting a person's vision to high sights, the raising of a person's performance to a higher standard, the building of a personality beyond its normal limitations. Again, very powerful statement. We, when you read quotes on leadership and you read from one to a hundred, they tend to blur after a while. But what I found was when I started taking these out of that context and putting them into my context, I could find some really powerful statements. Let's talk about change. Change to me is represented by a glass of wine. It doesn't have to be red, doesn't have to be white. It just has to be full. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, there's some whinies in here, huh? Yeah, yeah. Just as long as it's full. But how does it get there? How does it change from the soil and the vine and the buds and the grapes and stems and skins and yeast and all of that other stuff and sit for a very long time or short, depending upon if you're doing stainless fermentation. But the point is it waits. And when it waits, it's growing, but it's changing. I mean, when you grow, you're kind of the same person. You just are different. But when you are a glass of wine and you start with the soil, no, you've changed. It's not like, well, the point is the wine could actually taste like the terroir. Yes, but it doesn't look anything like it. It's completely different. To me, that's change. When you actually change something. And as leaders, our goal in Toastmasters especially is to change. Let's change the district. Let's make it President's Distinguished. Margaret Mead, an interesting woman, frequently spoke in the mass media during the 60s and 70s and did a lot of stu studies on cultural, sexu cultural sexuality. Nonetheless, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, concerned citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. I was watching something on National Geographic last night and it was one of those shows about the 80s. Well, the 80s were unusual, but they were talking about the Berlin Wall and watching that episode in history of when that wall came down, people going, that was, it was not such a small group, but the point is people change the world. Pretty amazing. A true leader has the confidence to stand alone, the courage to make tough decisions and the compassion to listen to the needs of others. He does not set out to be a leader but becomes one by the quality of his actions and the integrity of his intent. Douglas MacArthur. Now we know how successful Douglas MacArthur was, but let me also suggest to you that he had a huge failure. When they recalled him into World War II to go into the Pacific theater and be a commander, 
A series of disasters followed, starting with the destruction of his air forces on December 8, 1941, and the Japanese invasion of the Philippines. Now, if I was a division leader and that kind of stuff followed me around, I'd be pretty embarrassed. But he said, nope, I've got the courage, I'm going to go back, and we're going to win this war. Last but not least, service. To command is to serve and nothing less. Andre Malraux, I wanted to be a bit international. He's a French novelist, art theorist, and minister of cultural affairs in the government of France. So he too had a lot of observances of leadership. Now this is one of my favorites. Theodore Roosevelt, the best executive is the one who has sense enough to pick good men to do what he wants done and self-restraint enough to keep from meddling with them while they do it. Pick a good team, communicate your vision, talk about the change you wanna make, grow the members of your team. And I think you'll get there. What we're gonna do now is have a little bit of fun and it's not gonna take long. I think we'll go 10 minutes. It's called a breakout session. Now for you online, I'm looking because I make glasses. Let's see, I have Z Zeta, Shirley, Vanessa, Chet hi Chetanya, Tuan and Paul. All right, you guys are gonna be in just one group. I am gonna give you a question in just a minute. And then I'm gonna ask you all, I'm gonna ask you to unmute okay. and I'm gonna have you all talk to each other, okay? And answer the question. I'll be right back. We'll need you to come socially appropriately closer and figure out, oh, let's just do two groups, okay? We're gonna do two groups. I'm gonna figure out which one I want. So if you guys can, we can go each other. But we have two groups of four, please. Yeah, because you're going to be talking to other. Breakout session. I'm seeing. Very good. It's very difficult. Okay. Okay. Of you were three, and then I get to say, I'm going to discuss this. Yeah. Are you guys together? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Here are the instructions. We're going to use 10 minutes of our time. And we are going to talk about the question that you have in your group. Assign a note taker. This is pretty, pretty standard stuff. Assign a note taker, someone who can take notes, and then maybe the same person or a different person at the end of the internal discussions, I want you all to report back the top three things that answered your question. Christine, could you read your group question? Yes. Our question is how do you practice leadership in a way that electrifies your commitment to excellence? Excellent. So it's about practicing leadership and electrifying <laughs> your leadership excellence. The back group, what question is yours? How does being a mentor galvanize your commitment to leadership excellence? Good. It's about mentoring and galvanizing your commitment to leadership excellence. And I will let you guys get started. Okay. We'll time 10 minutes because by then we're going to have to be done pretty quick. Right. So, and then for the group online, I keep bending over because I forgot I can read this. Yay. Okay. Your question. This is for Vanessa, Titania, Tuan, Paul, Zeta. Can, are you uh, will un, we're going to unmute you right now? All right. And I want you to discuss this question. Open forum. Somebody take notes and be ready to re reply when called upon. Like what your top three answers are to this. What one experience galvanized your commitment to leadership excellence. This is about experience. 
So what leadership experience have you had that really committed you to excellence? It's in your session, and can you unmute everyone online? Uh, yeah, um, Sounds going to unmute, I guess. They can, can, they, can you unmute yourself? Can hear. Yeah. I can ask them. Right? Yeah. Uh, Tanya's unmuted. Paul's if unmuted. I, yeah, I can unmute them. Juan's um, unmuted. Zeta. All right, you guys, can you start talking to each other? You might want to put your pictures away and have your beautiful self. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Juan. Right, come on, Tanya. Got it. Let's go. Want to hear them in the room, All right, you guys are on your own. This is a workshop. I'm going to leave you on. Can you please repeat the question? Can you type it in chat? Yeah, that'd be great. Now, there was a question. If you have a question, please put it in chat. Mm -hmm. I don't see any lips moving. Oh, that's mostly because I don't see any faces except for twins. You're on your own. Don't forget, you got 10 minutes. Okay. Hey, Ron, I think this was the, the question, if I, I'm not mistaken. What's your question? Okay. Yeah. Is it on chat? Yeah, I can, I can type Since it in. Galvanized your experience to leadership excellence. Was that the question, Linda? That's, right. That's your question. Juan Wynn put in the question. Uh, can you do me a favor then, uh, Linda? Can you actually, uh, under Stephen Dredge, maybe uh, mute that? Because then it allows us in the group to, to chat without any background noise. Okay. Thank you. Yay. Much more quiet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, much better. Great, great. So it looks like this question is going to be a different for a little bit of, for all of us then, right? So it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six of us here, right? I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Would anyone want to yeah. like share with their, uh, their experience that galvanized their experience in uh, leadership excellence? Any volunteers? I'm thinking. <laughs> Actually, while you're thinking, let me share that, okay? So uh, since I do already have an experience. Uh, for me, actually, it was way back when, when I was in uh, finished up college and just started working in, in my first professional job in higher education as a specialist. And it was my mentor who said to me, Tuan, if you really want to move up quickly in your field, okay, and do a really good job and really be noticed, commit to excellence. So those were actually his words to me. And at that time, I was always a, a minus B plus student. So definitely, you know, def did pretty well in school, okay? But the concept of commitment to excellence he shared, to me, he shared with me was be the first one to show up, be the last one to leave, okay? Do above and beyond and just don't do the basic minimum. And because of that, I think that helped me as a young professional to one, get noticed, okay? Number two, to really kind of invest in myself and in my craft within higher education that allowed me to move up in higher education. Uh, so now I am in basically the, my, my dream job, which is basically a director of a transfer center, helping students from the community college to get to the university. So that's my experience. That's great. Mm -hmm. Anyone uh, would like to go next? Or let's do popcorn, okay? Can I uh, have, uh, have Joanna? Joanne, would you like to go next? Um, so um, can you repeat the question, please? Okay, it's uh, also in the chat. Uh, what one experience galvanized your experience to leadership excellence? Um. Uh, 
so I, I, uh, I don't, I don't think um, uh, I'm not sure relate in relation to the leadership excellence, but um, I've, I've worked on several projects uh, through collaborative teamwork, um, whether through school or through um, um, my position in the healthcare industry, um, or uh, just also serving as um, an officer in. Um, and the Toastmasters Club uh, helped me to gain the skills and interest in, in terms of uh, working together with others to you know, reach the same goals um, and uh, to make, um, uh, so for, to um, attain, I, I guess, uh, collaborative teamwork goals. Um, I, I'm sorry, I know it's not really leadership excellence, but uh, I, I think for me, it's just working with others. Nice. Joanna, do you want to pop on to somebody? Uh, uh, sure. Um, okay. So, um, I guess uh, um, uh, Paul Shepard. Yes, I think I don't think I've had one. Experience. I think it's more noticing that if I'm working in a group of people and they're sort of um, floundering, I guess, for lack of a better word, or it's unfocused on the goal, then to step in and get everybody focused by asking questions or trying to get them to, to focus on what we're trying to do. And then that way we're more productive and focused on achieving the goals that we're trying to achieve that day. Well, can you re re reiterate just a little bit? Because right now I do have you, uh, you saying, you know, for the most part, it's about group work and asking questions. Anything else? I guess the motivation for that would be to have seen where or seen when when there is no leadership where everyone is just doing their same thing and I see time not being utilized to its best extent and some members do one thing and other members of the group do another and they're not always working in unison one will maybe undo part of what somebody else is doing. So having focused, centered leadership is very important to achieve a goal and to make the best use of the time that you're given. Back from the Zoom team. Ready? Everybody ready? Oh, sorry. The Zoom team. Okay, you ready to come back? Make sure you have your you presenter. That works in the free. Uh, Somewhat. <laughs> question. Okay. All right. This is going to be the tricky part. I'm going to have the presenter of the group, and it'll be just two of you in the room, come to the mic here. So, but first, you know, let's go to the Zoom team first because we'll be able to hear them. Miss, the Zoom team, thank you. You had the question, what one experience galvanized your experience to leadership excellence? Who is your spokesperson? And please tell us what you decided. Well, we actually didn't really uh, choose a specific person, but since I think I had my microphone and, uh, and also, a video on it just uh, if uh, the group doesn't mind I could uh, take this one for the group okay uh, Tuan Nguyen uh, and I work as a counselor coordinator at uh, a community college okay so for our group uh, we didn't have a chance to get everyone to share yet I uh, we only got through half but in short um, for the besides me the two folks who did share it was really a matter of two things really okay um, for Joanne it wasn't really any one specific experience but it's a matter of you know working with different projects and being also in toastmasters 
and working with others. And because of that, you know, it's because of that work, you commit to others and, and to excellence. I think for one of our other members, Paul, I think his, what he shared was in group work, it's really about asking questions. And sometimes when there's really no leadership, okay? Yeah, and the people are just doing busy work. Um, it's a matter of then looking at what the problem or issue is and really taking initiative to achieve the goal. And then for myself, it was actually a mentor many, many years ago. So when I was about 23, 24 years old, a mentor of mine, when I got into my first job in higher education, um, my mentor shared with me, and he actually said these exact words to me, Tuan, in this job, you know, if you want to move up faster and really be noticed, commit to excellence. Be the first one there, be the last one to leave, wear a really good tie, really professional in all your conduct, and that will definitely help you out. So uh, because of those advice uh, that he provided to me, it helped me um, move up into higher education uh, to where I am today as a director of a transfer center to help students get from the community college to the university. Thank Great. You. Thank you guys very, very much. Appreciate your feedback. Let's give the Zoom team a hand. Thank you. All right. One of our two groups stands and deliver. Come on up and you can stand. I think you can stand right there. Actually, you know, come, go ahead. Come on back here. Watch your step and read your question and then give us your, your step. Okay. My question was, how do you practice leadership in a way that electrifies your commitment to excellence? Well, what we do is we bring people together to socialize under a common denominator. For example, something like wine tasting, who would have thought? What else would bring people together? Sports, people love sports, especially men. And if you have men in the group, you know what they're gonna talk about. So yes, something that brings people together and creates community relatedness and strong bonds. Also something that we do in my group we um, socialize around storytelling and storytelling is a powerful way to captivate your audience. It brings in your audience. And we often dress in costumes, not just for Halloween, but just for fun. And we wear hats, we wear pirate hats, we wear bonnets from the 1800s or whatever our theme is for the day. We create community in this way and everyone has a great time and everyone gets to participate. Also, another thing that was mentioned in our group was mentoring. Somebody is really strong on that and they said that they could go in deeper and when you see someone develop, when you're mentoring that person and you see that people are flourishing because of you, that creates something in you that you can't even put into words. When you see someone transforming, it makes not only the group grow, not only them grow, but you yourself grow. And in growing, you grow other people. And to give roles to new members is another powerful tool that we should use. Reverse meetings are a fun way to mix things up, bringing innovations and new ideas to the group that haven't been done. And the courage to create new things, to do new things, to take that first step and to support our new members in all that they do. Thank you. Excellent. By the way, that was a lot of information in 10 minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Do you feel better prepared to serve your clubs? Oh, that's a good one. Come on down, group number three. Three. Thank you. Why should the red signal? <laughs> it will be coming from Lillian. We got two. two. <laughs> Our question was, how does being a mentor galvanize your commitment to leadership excellence? We feel that being a mentorship or being a mentor validates your own knowledge. It allows you to reteach yourself at the same time it is teaching others and creating mentors. As you grow yourself, you can watch others grow 
And then leaders create other leaders. One of the things we all talked about is as we move up, somebody needs to take our spot. So we need to create leaders to take our spot so that we can personally grow. And that would create our path and journey that you were talking about earlier. Yeah, that's it. Well done. Amazing groups. And by the way, let me tell you what Bill Gates says. As we look ahead into the next century, leaders will be those who empower others which is exactly what you were talking about. Mentoring is important. What we talked about today, not just the kind of wish list of excellent business quotes, but we talked about experience. What is our experience and how does it commit us to leadership excellence? What is, and I can't see this, and Paul, I got to get that's not a search. I need to see the presentation. Mentoring. We talked about mentoring. Our last group had that question. Mentoring is what will make us successful because if we focus on the success of others, we will be successful. We talked about Listening. No, we didn't talk about listening. We only had three groups. Listening, we didn't talk about, but what do we do in a Toastmasters meeting besides talk? Listen. Active listening. Active listening. We'll talk about that on another day, but it is one of the four pillars of excellence. And of course, practice. I really liked what came from our practice group. A lot of information in a few short minutes. So thank you very much. I gotta go. It's five minutes to the next meeting. All right. I would like to close right now, but I can't. I have everything on my screen except what I want to see. Okay, let's talk about closing. Been a bit of a boat rodeo, but I appreciate you all sticking with me. And I appreciate everyone in the room breaking out. That's where the learning comes. You can look up the Forbes 100 best leadership quotes on your own. You don't need me to read it to you, but I did. And thank you all for not all 100 of them. And thank you all online for your participation. But I want you to go home or go, at least go into your next class with this thought. When you put the success of others, ahead of your own, this journey, this leadership journey becomes a continuum. We heard that the other night. It becomes a continuum, a continuous thread through your success as a leader. And I really like what John Quincy Adams says. He was around a long, long time ago. Things were really different back then because we didn't have Zoom. But this is what he said. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. for inspiring us to become better leaders and you know, continue the journey of leadership. Thank you all. And remember for those on Zoom, if you can hear me, there is a survey. And for those in person, I'll be collecting the surveys now. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Linda.